guys, how are you? Hope you're all doing very well. This afternoon I'm going to be doing a movie review. This movie is a drama from Finland, Finnish language English subs, released in the year 2005, directed by Aku Lehimis, and this movie is called Frozen Land. So Frozen Land is set in Helsinki, Finland. You've got a group of characters who have had bad luck, and that bad luck just keeps on getting worse and worse. So at the start of the film, you've got this guy who's a very popular teacher. He has a teenage son, but one day he's fired from his job, and he's very shocked by this, and he just doesn't have any other options. So he goes home, he starts to drink, and he starts to get very violent towards his teenage son until the teenage son can't take anymore. He ends up leaving the father, much to the father's disappointment. So this teenage son tries to um, stay at his friend's house and this is where he comes across some counterfeit money. So he uses this money to buy a CD player from a pawn shop and this is where the luck, the bad luck from this teenage boy has been put onto the pawn shop owners. So when the pawn shop owners realise what's going on, they put their bad luck on someone else and it just keeps on having a domino effect until the whole situation just blows out of proportion and puts everyone's lives in grave risk and to prevent myself from giving away too much more if you want to know how the movie unfolds please go out there and see it for yourself because that's as far as I'm going with my synopsis. Now my thoughts on Frozen Land. This was a very interesting film. It is once again another movie that no one ever talks about. So expectations, I was very curious as to see what this would deliver. It is from Finland, so it's the Scandinavian area. And Scandinavian, as you know, has a very high standard. So wasn't really sure if this movie would reach that standard. And in the end, it doesn't really reach that really high standard. But I will say, it is a very interesting film because it's a comment on you know people's lives. And it's the lives of people that are not depicted very much in film because it's a very risky thing to do. Now as a viewer, a viewer wants hope, a viewer wants to know that you know, bad situations are going to get better and that things are going to work out for the best and this film really knows that sort of mentality and it knows that sort of hope and it's kind of crushing that hope and there's a scene at the end, I'm not going to give away, but there's a scene of dialogue that basically sums up that attitude that you know if when things are really bad and things are you know, going from bad to worse and it just keeps on getting darker and darker, eventually the rain is going to stop, eventually the sun's going to come out and eventually you're going to have better luck. But is that true? And I think that's what really makes people very uncomfortable in knowing that sometimes luck can just drive you down and you can actually stay down. And so this movie is not a fairy tale. This movie actually feels like it's not a movie made to make the viewer comfortable. It's made to make the viewer realise the other side of humanity and that humanity can, you know, lives don't always work out for the best. And as much as we want to see these fairy tale films where, you know, they go from hero to zero to hero, it doesn't really happen every day. And I think this is a movie that indicates people who don't get that luck. And as the situation gets worse and worse, the, um, the feeling that the viewer has is more and more depression. And the, the director really revels in this depression and he's just hitting you while you're down. And you think that you just can't take any more, that things can't get any worse for these people, but it does. And I just think that negative sort of effect, you know, where it starts off with this guy who got fired, but his uh, frustration when he vents it out on the next person, then that person vents out their frustration on the other person, it shows you how much of an impact that can have as well. So your surroundings basically dictate how you're going to be. And straight from the start, this teenage son especially, he's in this very negative environment he's got a very negative outlook on the life uh, on life and it shows you how powerful these people's minds can be and that if you're not thinking that things are going to get better then things are only going to get worse so I thought the acting was great I mean the characters were very well portrayed as I said it just gets worse and worse and you don't really have a character to root for because although their situation is very sympathetic they're doing things that you don't have any sympathy for but at the same time you don't hate them so they're very realistic gray area sort of characters they're not black and white you don't have someone to root for you don't have someone to hate in fact, I felt really sorry for everybody involved. And so that was the beauty of the film, is that it makes you that uncomfortable when you don't have someone to root for. You don't have someone to take their side. And so it actually feels like it's playing out in a very realistic fashion. So the cinematography was brilliant. It had a very, very harsh landscape. It was in the middle of winter, very cold. But it's the coldness of the environment that really matched the coldness of these characters. So it felt like the cinematography in itself was a character and that all these people were engulfed in this you know, bitterness, you know, this darkness. And it was just engulfing them to the point where their lives were not going to get any better. It's just a ticking time bomb. And you're expecting something really shocking to happen at the end. And indeed, that's what actually happens. And so I thought the build-up and the payoff was really, really well done. It's a two-hour film, but each story actually had its own sort of... It had its own heart. It had its difference. And so, although it goes for two hours, it doesn't feel like it goes for two hours because it's basically kind of like an anthology. It's kind of like Pulp Fiction, where it takes the perspective of different characters and intertwines it to make it an overall piece. And so that's what I really liked about it, is that it did have a creative sort of spin on it, and it's a drama that is documented that is not documented all that often. So this is a typical European film. 
film where it dares to be different. There are there are some pretty controversial moments as far as um, you know very uh, provocative materials concerned, but it's not overly graphic. So I, I like the fact that it's relying more on the atmosphere as opposed to shocking you. And uh, some other films are lazy in that they'll they'll show you something truly shocking. And you feel that that's compensating for the fact that they can't build an atmosphere. And I think that this movie really knows how to build an atmosphere. So fans of psychological kind of dramas are going to get something out of this. So there are a few sex scenes, but once again, not overly provocative. But you do get the sense that it is enough to really uh, get you out of your comfort zone. So that's something I really liked as well. So the dialogue was very good. I was very uh, shocked to see that there was some humour in there as well. There were some moments that were very quirky. And I thought that it didn't derail it. It didn't actually feel out of place. It just felt very natural. And there were some moments that actually lightened the mood up a little bit, just for a split second. And so you kind of felt that you know when a, when a certain character got drunk, he does something funny, and you think, okay, well that's alleviated me a little bit. But once this guy becomes sober, his reality is going to come crashing down. And so it gives you that sort of feeling that you, you've got a slight sense of hope, you've got a slight sense of comedy, but that never lasts. It's quickly engulfed by the darkness that the film has at around every corner. So it was a very strange sort of experience to see that some of the humour actually really works, but it's not enough to really make you feel in a better mood. Unfortunately for me, however, with Frozen Land, I thought that there was one particular problem that the film had, and that was in one character. Now, this character, once again, I'm not going to give anything away, but he was by far the most interesting. And then all of a sudden, his, his story finishes, but it doesn't feel like it intertwines with any other story. And so I felt that you've got the best story here, and it just finished a little bit too early, and it just felt a little bit out of place. And the rest of the stories actually intertwined very well. But this story in particular, I didn't really think it was used to its full potential because this guy was incredibly interesting and I think that his situation that he was facing was very um, intriguing, very depressing once again, but when, once he stops then all of a sudden it feels like it's just it's wiped it away and it doesn't really intertwine, you think to yourself why was it there? And so that was my only problem. It was a problem that really got on my mind and actually it, I noticed it. It didn't distract me, but I really noticed it. And I thought that it, it just, a little bit of this film felt like it wasn't really developed to the point of the other stories. But having said that, Frozen Land is still definitely a movie I would recommend if you are a fan of European, Scandinavian sort of psychological dramas that will make you think about your own life and that will make you think about the harsh sort of darkness of humankind. So overall for Frozen Land, I'm going to give it four stars. Go out there and see it. I was impressed. Alright guys, that's it for my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, keep watching movies and I'll see you later.